Hi, welcome to Rich Social Worker. I am Eva Ford, social worker, mindset mentor, and coach. And on this channel, we talk all about money, mindset, and motivation to help you live your richest life. And today on the channel, I'm so excited because I'm having a conversation with Harleni Vasquez. Now, if you are someone who maybe is new in the job market and you're trying to find a job, or maybe you're a new entrepreneur and you're trying to get people to notice you and notice your value, then you are going to love this conversation because in in her day job, Harleni is actually a social work supervisor, but she's also got a business as a career coach where she helps social workers on LinkedIn. This conversation is going to touch on how to put yourself out there so that people can notice you, so that you can get paid either through a job or in your business in the way that you deserve. So this conversation goes a little longer than my typical conversations, but don't even worry about it. You're going to want to stick around to the end because at the end, Harleni talks about how to leverage all of your passions, all of your skills, all of your interests on LinkedIn so that you can get noticed. So do me a favor. If you like this type of content and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be made aware every time I upload a new video. Click that like button. Because here we go. Welcome to Rich Social Worker, Heart Lenny. I'm so excited to have you on the channel. How are you? Going up? Great. So happy to be here. I'm so excited. I'm doing great. How are you? Estamos hablar en español solamente. I can't. Claro, I'm hablar español. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Vámonos. All right. So I, you know, I wanted to have you on the channel because um, it's kind of a first. You are you're still in your 20s and um i have a lineup of people who i've wanted to have on my channel but you kind of skipped the line and came to the beginning because you are so young in in this entrepreneurial game as a social worker and i see you all over my timeline um and <laughs> plus you have a full-time job Plus, you are running a business and managing clients, and I know how all of that can be as well. And so I, I just wanted to, you know, bring you in front of the, my audience, because a lot of the people that watch Rich Social Worker are, are in their 20s, um, early 30s. Some of them are even um, retired or retiring, but um, they they're not where you are. And, and they're just kind of at the beginning of thinking about how to make more money in social work, or maybe they just graduated. And so they want to know like how to leverage their skills or what else can they do. And so I just, I thought that your example was really impressive because I'm like, okay, well, you're doing it. So um, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for being on the channel. Yeah. And so, yeah, just, just, if you can share with my audience a little bit about, um, yeah, how did you not so much get into social work, but leverage, you know, figure out that, you know, entrepreneurship was a thing that you could do with your social work degree. And um, then how, I'll, maybe I'll ask you, an, I'll ask you another question about how you figured out your niche, but one thing at a time. Take it away. Again, thank you so much for having me. I get asked this question all the time. Like, how did you even start? Like, how did you even get into this space? And let me tell you, if you know me, I am a natural career cheerleader. Like, this is who I am, regardless in every position. I have always, I have, you know, I'm currently in social work supervisor. So I have a lot of leadership skills. And I always knew that I was meant for something more. Obviously, I didn't have this idea of like coaching or entrepreneurship like overnight. To be honest, this all came about when I just started putting myself out there in the sense of like, let me just get on Instagram. Let me just share tips for my audience in general, right? Building my audience slowly because I only have a year doing this. And if you look at me, you're probably like, oh my God, it looks like you've been doing this forever, right? But I literally just made a year in my business last month. So honestly, all of that came about with just putting myself out there, sharing value, you know, putting out there um, stuff that people wanted to hear and slowly but surely led me into the coaching world, into the entrepreneurship world. And 
holy behold, you know, I invested in business coaches and to really show me the marketing world and all of those things. And then here I am a year later, definitely um, in a place that I would never thought possible. And I know for all of, you know, everyone who's currently thinking like, but how do I even get there? The first step is just put yourself out there right? We all start with this idea and then it kind of brainstorms and, you know, transform, but community is also everything. And it's like, what I'm trying to say is just, if you have this idea, just go for it and everything else will flow. Sometimes we feel that I need to have everything figured out. I need to have a website. I need to have this and that. And then we just get so wrapped up in our mind. And as we know, as social workers, we, you know, our thoughts really influence our behavior. So Mm -hmm. if we get wrapped up in this idea that, oh my God, until I have this and this established, then I'll do this, then we're never going to take action. So I'm coming from that, you know, place of like, if you have this idea, just start with one step at a time. So, okay, because you mentioned audience. So are you saying that, because I I think people don't think about an audience, really. Um, They think about, okay, I need a business first. And then the audience is like, oh yeah, I guess I need people (laughs) to to know what I'm doing. So if going back, if we can, if we can try to pinpoint when you started showing up on Instagram, um, who who was following you? Are you talking about friends were following you or were you following people? How did that work? Okay, so yeah, let me let me piggyback. So everyone has this idea, right? A purpose or a message that you, they want to share, right? Whether it's, let's say, marketing, sales, career coaching. I mean, this depending what specific aspect you want or the specific message you want to go about, you have to start with that. So basically, I knew because coming from this, you know, natural career cheerleader aspect, I just wanted to start posting content regarding career related, like, you know, how to interview and all those things. So what I did was obviously I have a personal Instagram, but I knew like, okay, I need to create a brand new Instagram just starting from scratch because I know, again, I wasn't thinking about like the whole, I want to make this a business. It was just, let me just start a platform, right? When it's kind of the same concept when people want to start a blog, let me just, you know, separate the two, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, you always want to, you know, well, LinkedIn is a different world, but at least for Facebook and Instagram, you want to divide the two, personal and, you know, this platform that you're trying to build. So I didn't have anyone like, you know, friends will follow me. And then this is the thing, Instagram has a way, and I keep talking about Instagram, I'm pretty sure it'll be the same with Facebook, but Instagram has a way with people just starting to find you, right? Mm -hmm. The more you start showing up, consistency is key. So don't focus so much on like, oh my God, but I just created this, you know, Instagram platform and nobody's following me. Keep showing up, the people will come. And that's what happened. People kept showing up again and we'll go into the whole niche um, from question, but I just started showing up. I didn't have the vision that I have now. It was just like, I just want to share value. I just want to help people. That is the purpose that I had starting out and I went with it until everything else aligned. Okay. If anyone has a specific like vision or like, you know what, like, let's say, um, they want to do entrepreneurship and share, you know, how to start a restaurant. I'm just being giving an example because everyone has different views, but let's say mm-hmm. that was the particular aspect and start sharing value on how to, you know, get someone from point A to point B again, just share specific value. Just start mm-hmm. with that. Mm-hmm. So thanks for that. I think though, a lot of my audience, um, they they come in confused. You sound like you were pretty clear on your strengths, and your interest as it relates to, like you said, being a cheerleader for social work and social workers. I think what I would just add to that is for those who may not be clear and may be trying to figure out what is their thing, you know, where their value is. um, You know, I always say, you know, kind of throw a lot of spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks, you know, if you're, if you're interested in tutoring people or if you're interested in art or whatever it is, um, start to, just like you said, Harlani, you know, put yourself out there, put, put things out there and see what people maybe gravitate for, towards, see what your interest, you know, what you're spending more time on, because, you know, you, you're never going to figure it out trying to analyze your way to entrepreneurship. You've, you've actually got to 
act. And that's exactly what it sounds like you did. Absolutely. And another thing for those who are like, I have no idea what I want to do, but I know I have this idea. Ask people around you, like, you know, what are my current strengths in your eyes? What do you see that I am good? Am I a good motivator? Am I a good, like you said, tutor? So really act in the eyes of people around you. Because again, the reason I knew it was a natural career cheerleader, because everyone around me will always go to me like resume, you know, a job searching. So that's something that people started bringing in the light to me. Not that I discovered, you know what I mean? It's just, I kept seeing a common theme. So I will yeah. tell everyone, if you're currently feeling stuck, ask your audience and just start paying attention to your energy, right? Like what really sparks your interest when you talk about a certain topic, right? If, again, going into, like, I'm just saying like tutoring or coaching, I'm just saying an example, but whatever, um, specific you know topic really sparks your interest really start jotting that down like hey i noticed when i talk about this yeah you know, I light up i get so excited so it just really mm -hmm. takes a moment to analyze and then like i said everything else will flow perfect thank you that that is exactly the advice that i've <laughs> given that on the channel before <laughs> yeah i'll put the video link up okay so i personally am fascinated with your um, social media prowess. And so I'd love for you to talk to us about, you know, how the role that you see social media playing in growing your business and not just in growing your business, but how can social workers, because I think so many social workers are afraid of using social media um, outside of maybe just to, to be social with friends, but they're afraid of using social media to to promote themselves or to start a business or to grow a business and you seem to be really um really adept with linkedin obviously you're a linkedin coach um as well as um instagram and i think tiktok too if i'm not mistaken well i started tiktok but i just let that go i'm my, oh. my sole focus is linkedin a little bit of instagram but it's slow solely linkedin okay so, so just talk, I'd love to, um, to hear your take on the role that social media has played in the growth of your business. Absolutely. Well, you know, entrepreneurship, like everything's online, especially given this pandemic and all of us are remote, everything yep. is being done online, especially social media. And I know it may sound like scary, like, oh, I don't want to promote myself. Well, I don't want to charge this. So I don't want to get on camera. It's so scary. But Again, if I look back at my first video a year ago, it's completely 360 to what I do now. Practice makes perfect. This idea that I have is each day that you're not starting your business or you're not putting yourself out there is a day that someone is missing out on your service right so if you come from that aspect you can kind of feel motivated within like i am losing out on potential clients regardless of what area you know business business you go to whether it's consulting coaching i mean you name it because yeah. within this field you can literally do whatever you want right and yeah, right? literally whatever you want i want you guys to know that yeah. right so social media is so important because this is where you start building your personal brand. People start being like able to recognize. And this obviously goes back to marketing, which I had to get, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help because a lot of the things is we feel that we need to figure out on our own. Obviously, I don't know anything about marketing. I'm a social worker, right? So I really mm -hmm. seek the marketing aspect. But what I have to say um, regarding marketing, it's you're developing your personal brand. Personal branding can be, you know, to the colors that you use for like, you know, the what you post or the way that you come about with your personality, right? Like I am known to be very vibrant. So everyone is, I'm developing this presence on the online. Like, oh, Harleni, yeah, she's a career coach on LinkedIn, right? So it's really about developing that personal branding among yourself and your business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, social media is, I mean, I know they who don't want an online business and I don't want to make a scene that old, but for those who have this idea of like, but I don't only want to do online work. I want to do in person. Just know 
you first have to build your online presence in order to then reach your goal of doing like in-person events. Because of my current presence, I have attracted, you know, many different organizations that I have collaborated with, you know, in universities or just, you know, nonprofit organizations. And obviously we're in COVID, but I know once things get clear, I will be able to start doing those in-person events. But this mm -hmm. all would have been possible if I didn't develop my online presence. Yeah, I read something recently that said like millennials um, attribute credibility to people who, or companies, individuals uh, who are online. And I think that's where we really are at this point in society. Like you need to be online. And I know that like I was coaching with somebody yesterday and they were like, yeah, but it's, it's too much and it's overwhelming. And, you know, my take on it is every social media platform is its own beast. Um, and so you don't have to do all of them at one time, maybe just pick one or two. What do you say about that? When you're starting out, just pick one. Just mm -hmm. pick one and test it out. Because again, some people do really good on Facebook. My Facebook is a little quiet, I'm not gonna lie. So I don't focus on that. I don't focus my energy on that. Mm -hmm. So I, when you're starting out, again, I just started with Instagram, just to start with Instagram. but. What do you want to do? LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, just start, um, just start with one platform and test it out and see mm -hmm. level of engagement, how people react. Right. Mm -hmm. And then go from there. Just do not move on to multiple platforms until, you know, you feel that like you have yeah. established it's, too much. it's overwhelming. So when, when people approach you, what do they normally ask you about at this point? Are they asking you about like how, how to find a job and leverage their LinkedIn profiles? or their social work degrees, or are they asking you about entrepreneurship and business building? Or do you get maybe both? So I get a, um, I get a balance of both. So obviously I'm not a business coach. So what I do is I refer to people in my network, including you, I have referred a lot of people to you as well. So usually I get that, you know, all the time. And even people who are not social workers in general, I always like refer people out. Um, but I do get a lot of people saying like, hey, I'm currently, you know, haven't been able to secure a job. I'm not doing well in interviews. Can we talk? So I do get a lot of that, you know, balance of both. And it's great that, you know, a lot of social workers are really taking, you know, their own initiative or their own careers in regards to entrepreneurship. And I love it. The social work community is so supportive, guys. And there's so many social work um, Instagram accounts, right? That is not only like, again, coaching. There's people that are developing an online presence and just know everyone starts somewhere. Yeah, I do love that. I think when I started many years ago, before Instagram was even a thing, um, <laughs> there, there, there weren't a lot of social workers online. You're absolutely right. And, and now I'm seeing so many, which is great. I think it's, I, I think it's, been needed. And I also think that this is what social work has, has needed in order to change the conversation about what we're worth and what we do. And so I think, I think it's a great time for more social workers to find their own unique voice and their unique thing, even if um, they are working a full-time job, still you've got so many other skills and, and tools and interests and things that you can share with the world. So I just wanted to reiterate that as well. Is that something that you also share with your clients? Absolutely. I've had clients that were also that they got, you know, I helped them secure a job and they were also interested in, you know, in entrepreneurship. And basically I do a lot of my work. I do focus a lot on mindset, right? You know, limiting beliefs and positive syndrome. And, you know, that's something that you will always have to deal with, you know, as a human being. But I also deal with that with my clients. And I, again, I help them, you know, connect with other people in their network. You know, I get a few of my clients who really want to involve within higher ed. And again, it's all about network, you know, and we can definitely talk about LinkedIn later, but your network is very important, right? And we all have this idea that we want to, you know, sometimes ideas come up at the end of the day is you have to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to go for it? Because I see it all the time that people are just like, oh no, but I can't. So it's like, not saying that you don't want it badly, but you have to ask yourself what I need to do, what I want my life to be 10 years down the line, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Again, I'm currently employed full time and you know, I love being a social work supervisor, but I know my true mission and purpose is evolving in my business and the direction mm -hmm. that I want to go towards, right? It's not only coaching. Right. Um, 
you know, to, to kind of give more of an idea of this possibility and doors is so I'm currently working on drafting a curriculum to present to different deans around you know different social work schools to really um develop you know a course or an elective to really bridge that gap from graduation to the workforce you're probably so thinking, like, how do you do that honestly you I, I I have um spoken to I've been a guest speaker at you know a couple of universities over the last couple of months and I have my network tap into my network i have spoken to many deans um in new york and california and i said you know how can i get into your school how can i do this network they're like well draft a you know curriculum a syllabus present it and that's yeah. your way in so again no one's telling me this is all through my network and i have this vision and i'm going to accomplish what is it this year next year or the year after but just know like just know you know exactly what you need to know and everything else that you don't, you will figure it out. That's yeah. pretty much it, right? Yeah. Well, I yes and no. And I say no because I'm one of those people that spend a lot of time in the in the woods trying to figure it out. And and you know, by the time I did, it was like, okay, I guess I did know this, but maybe not the not the specific. So I I I get that there are, yeah, there are some people, I, I'm now very content with my journey. I love my journey, but um, I also acknowledge that everybody's journey is different. And so let's talk about, like you mentioned LinkedIn. Um, I'd love to, let's talk about it. Like what is the, what is the question that you think social workers need to be asking or people need to be maybe asking you <laughs> that nobody asks about whether maybe it's the, the job search or, or LinkedIn itself or uh, leveraging their social work skills or skills, whether they're a social worker or not. Because I also have people who watch this channel who aren't necessarily social workers, but they, they are in the helping profession. So, so what is that thing that people need to know or consider, you think? Okay, so this is, I guess, the LinkedIn 411. So with LinkedIn is literally a platform that everybody needs to be on. Whether, like you said, whether you want to be entrepreneurship, whether you're not seeking a job, like this is a platform that everybody needs to be on because these are people that it's all around the world. People are being, it's not like Instagram and it's not like Facebook. It's an opportunity to, you know, like people think that LinkedIn is only has to be quote unquote professional and I can only, you know, post work things like no LinkedIn has transformed people share their stories people engage with one another people connect with people all over the world. And with LinkedIn is your pla your profile is very, very important right you should have a clear picture you should have a clear headline and I know when you first create a LinkedIn profile everything automates and a lot of people regarding whether you're a social worker or not they think like oh my LinkedIn profile profiles created but no like you need to edit all of this because what I want you guys to know and I don't want to overwhelm everybody but the more information you're able to put on your LinkedIn profile in regards to the skills basically when someone goes into your LinkedIn profile they need to know who you are what you have to offer and what are you trying to seek whether it's a new role whether it's you know starting a business or whether it's just connecting with people, you know, around the world. The more that you start, you know, engaging with others, you're developing that personal brand that I spoke about, right? If in the sense of that, you know, if you start engaging and commenting on well-known people, especially in regarding the industry that you want to learn more about, let's say it's within higher ed or within, um, you know, the coaching world, the more you're start, starting to develop that personal branding, the more you'll be able to, you know, get recognized and you can start i get qu this question asked all the time like i don't know what to post you know mm -hmm. i don't i don't create content you can put something as sharing articles you know sharing people's content or just talking about your day sh sharing accomplishments like i'm telling you linkedin has transformed and they have linkedin stories now just like instagram so it is an, another touch to kind of show your every day today so for you fellow job seekers is a great platform to put yourself out there, really show and hone in on your skills and what you have to offer. Because the more skills and qualifications you have in your profile, the more um, recruiters can find you. LinkedIn is like a Google search engine, right? If people are finding like, you know, a healthcare administrator and your profile has all these skills, then your profile will, will um, you know, pop up. 
And of course, and if you start engaging with others, it's all about increasing visibility. Mm-hmm. The more eyes on your profile, the more opportunities can come about. Whether it's a new role, whether someone wants to speak in, you know, in their podcast, whether they want to collaborate, like LinkedIn has literally been a game changer for my business. Again, because uh-huh. LinkedIn, it has opened many um, doors for me. I'm currently um, part of the NASW NYC social yeah. board because of the, for, because of LinkedIn. I have spoken at, you know, different podcasts, different universities, like the list goes on. All because of LinkedIn and mind you, I have only been doing this, my business for a year. So yeah. anything was to come. All right, Harleni, I've got a question from a viewer. Project for Life asked the question, I've got to put on my glasses so I can read it. <laughs> but I thought you might be able to answer. All right, he or she says, I'm completing my last year of my master's in clinical social work, but I have no desire to work in a traditional social work field. I also don't plan on ever going back to school, but I am a lifelong learner and I read a lot of books on neuroscience. I'm wondering if you can do a video on how to add online training or independent learning to your resume. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of online trainings and love reading scholarly journals on new research and I want to see how I can add this to my resume. I also have a 15 year background as a radio slash personality um, producer and a former personal trainer and classroom instructor. I would love suggestions on how to incorporate these passions into a social work job. I thought you were the perfect person to have on the channel to answer this. So could you please answer for Project Fit for Life this question? Well, first, um, also congrats on, you know, almost graduating. That's exciting. And, you know, I commend you for being aware that you do not want to go towards that clinical route that, you know, I see this all the time that social workers think like I myself, you know, went into um, clinic, um, I had, I went into the clinical concentration, but I did not go towards the clinical route. So definitely commend you with that. And that's totally like awesome that you are aware from, of this at this time. So What I want you to know in regards to your resume is great that you have all of these skills, you know, highlighted. All of these skills can be, you know, transferable skills to any specific position that you apply to. Your first question in regards to adding it to your resume. In your resume, you should have a core competency section. What that means are specific skills that you're putting that you want to highlight when you're applying to a job. So I know also in your resume for the last particular section, you can add radio host in there. You can add, you know, personal trainer. And you're probably thinking, okay, if I add these core competence sections, then how do I find this ideal role? This goes back to my previous conversation regarding LinkedIn and networking. Obviously, you're not going to find this ideal job posting, right? Social work is really what you make it. It's all about really honing in. You have your ideal skills and you know exactly what you want, you know, your next job to be right your specific dream job how you can apply your skills to a specific role with all of those skills so what i would recommend is tapping into your linkedin network connecting you know with previous radio hosts or on previous producers or even like online instructors and really reaching out to them to conduct an informational interview and what this means is basically getting the formal one from someone right like hey i see that you are a radio host and this specific you know radio station. I would love to chat. I'm I'm currently interested in getting in the specific field. You know, do you have 20 minutes to chat? Basically, you're not saying that, you know, you were looking for a job, but this is going to really, again, tap into your network and you're going to be able to get some information because at times what happens is they may have a job posting, right? But you have this idea and I hope this helps. You have this, um, all of these skills highlighted. So what you need to do is tap into each area right again find someone who's in you know online instructor someone find someone who's in um you know already a host and see where your interest best aligns and then you know you can create a specific um you know ideal job within that just tapping into your network right and networking is really going to open opportunities for you because again those the fact that you have all of these skills highlighted is so great now you just have to take it to another level and just tapping into your network to see exactly okay do i see myself doing this or doing that based on speaking to people who are in those roles because sometimes you know position can be created for you like you never know so i hope this helps and you know regarding your resume to do a recap 
have a core competence, core competency section where you're going to add your specific skills. Obviously, the this specific area you always want to tailor to the job that you're applying. But you know, training and development, online instructor, and you know, team development are transferable skills that you can apply in any role. Obviously, personal trainer or radio host are something to the next level. But what I'm trying to say is you can definitely add those specific skills to any specific job yeah. that you apply to because training and development and, you know, um, really shows that you have those leadership skills. I hope this helps. Yes, that's good advice. And, and I would say for anybody that's listening, a lot of times we get so caught up on the job titles. Yes. But like saying, Harlene, it's not necessarily about the titles. It's about your skills because your skills like you said, are transferable. Many of them are transferable. So you might have a job title um, and use skills from many different parts of, of your career. So um, thank you so much for that, Harmony. We are going to do a part two. Absolutely, definitely. So I want all of our viewers to get their questions ready and um, you know, ask them in the comment section. I cannot wait to read the results. It's been so wonderful having you on the channel. Can you let everybody know where they can find you and follow you on LinkedIn and Instagram Absolutely. and all of the places? Yes. Well, on LinkedIn, I am by my name, Harleni Vasquez. And on Instagram, I'm by my company name, my business name, Your Evolved Mind. I know she's going to put down the links on below. And of course, I have Facebook too, Harleni Vasquez. But like I said, I'm not really on Facebook that much. So Instagram and LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me. Um, even if you're not a social worker, still connect with me. I offer, you know, so much advice, inspirational content, and just, you know, tips regarding, you know, career success. <laughs> Do you know what I say at the end of all of my videos? I'm putting you on the spot. You don't have to know it. No. <laughs> oh, that's fine. No, because it's, it's based, it's like focused on mindset. So we're at the end of the video. So I usually say, I believe you can dream, be, do, or have anything you want in life, but it starts with your mindset. So make sure it's a rich one. Thank you, Harleen, for being here. Thanks, audience, for being here. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.